Good evening, my name is Julie Little and I'm the Guidance Department Chair at Attleboro High School. It's nice to, uh, to be with you tonight. Um, one of the things that, um, that was certainly missing about school was uh, seeing the students. So um, we're really excited to, to have the seniors back with us and we're very excited to be working with the families. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about all things um, college and career. Um, one of the things that, uh, that we'll be focusing on would be um, the college process, um, which would include four and two year schools. We're also going to be focusing on how to pay for college. Uh, so we'll be talking about financial aid and scholarships. And we'll also talk about employment for those students that um, are going into employment and also the military. We're very proud of the fact that we have a number of students that go into the military. So uh, we do have a segment on that. And then we'll wrap up with resources that are available to you in the process. So one of the things that, that I want to start off by saying is that um, this, is, this has been quite a year. Um, uh, many of us on the staff have been doing this for, for several years. Um, I've been a guidance counselor for over 20. And so um, everything that we've done before um, in the process, we're, we're, we're going to be doing, but just a little bit differently. So uh, tonight, hopefully you can uh, get a sense of what we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to be meeting with all of the students individually. Um, and so, um, you know, we look forward to, to going through this process with them individually. Um, the first thing that I would like to talk to you about um, would be individual college requirements. Um, so there's no one universal statement that we can make about this. Um, that has been true over the years. So when you think about colleges and you think about requirements, um, there, there's no one universal statement that you can make. Uh, but it's particularly true this year. So some of the colleges that we had um, in the past that required SATs or required certain things, um, they, that might be a little bit different. Um, so one of the things that we, we definitely say to families is you need to, to check the individual websites, you need to check in with the individual colleges. That's gonna be the best source of information. Um, one of the things that, um, that we're very proud of is that we have um, a very robust list of colleges um, and, and military recruiters that are going to be coming in. So the best thing to do is to ask the expert. So either call the admissions office, go on their websites, or better yet, the colleges that are coming to us, make sure that, that you're, you're present on those visits and um, ask those, those very important questions. One of the things that's very important about the process is to personalize it for you. Um, we have seen that even though there are so many applications that are out there, um, colleges receive thousands of applications every year. It's very important that, that you stand out. So one of the ways to do that is, is to personalize the process. And that would be going to the visits that we have. We have a number of virtual visits. Um, emailing admission counselors because all the admission counselors have a certain territory. So if you can connect with them, um, the same thing would be true for financial aid representatives uh, to personalize the process. It absolutely helps you stand out. And one of the things that we've seen, and you'll, you'll get a chance to see this a little bit later, um, demonstrated interest in a college is extremely important. The other thing that we learned during, uh, during these times is it's very important to have a backup plan. Um, Many students decide that they want to go very far away from for college, and, and that, is, that is a great decision. And many of our students did last year. We were you know, very excited. They went all over, um, and we, we suspect that they will want to do the same this year. Um, but a word of advice is to definitely have a backup plan because you never know what is going to happen. So we'll be talking a little bit more about this in terms of having a, a financial ba backup plan. Uh, but also have one that's a geographic backup plan. Um, if, you're, if your goal is to go to, um, to school out of the country or perhaps you know, to the West Coast, um, also look to have something close to home because you never know what's going to happen. So I, uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Ms. McDonald. Hi, I'm Lindsay McDonald, Guidance Counselor in House 2. And what I'm going to be talking to you about is the overview of the college process and what seniors should be doing now. So first with the overview of the college process, Ms. Little did touch on this um, a little bit, is network early. We are so fortunate to be having 
so many colleges coming to visit us virtually this year. We have four year, two year in tech schools coming to visit us. We are holding these on Wednesdays and all students you know, have access to sign up to do that. Um, these visits are being hosted by the admission counselors that will likely be reading your application. So it is so, it's really amazing when I talk with admission counselors every year and they remember students that they have talked to at college visits, at college fairs, who have emailed them to contact them. They really do remember this contact. So it's really important to get out there and kind of make those connections. This is the same with financial aid. This is the best place where you can get those questions answered. I know there's a lot of stress and anxiety over financial aid, paying for school, um, especially in these times. Financial aid offices, they're here to answer your questions. So don't, don't be hesitant to reach out to them. The other thing to keep in mind about the whole college process is it is a process. The college admissions process is a, is a process. You have to kind of be patient, remember to breathe. Um, this whole process, sometimes it's just not predictable. It changes from year to year. Uh, and sometimes it's definitely not always fair. Some excellent, excellent students don't get into their number one through no fault of their own. Um, they, they have done everything right, checked every box, but sometimes it just doesn't kind of work out but there is a college for everybody. And that's what we are here to do to try to help your student find that college um, and to make sure that they are prepared. Uh, we have been through this. We, we are professionals. We have been through this application process many times. It's natural for you and your student to be a little nervous, especially if this is your first time going through it. So do ask us for help. Um, in, in sending materials to colleges, we actually have the access to confirm dates materials are sent. And this day and age is just so incredible with technology. Many times we're able to confirm when those colleges download that school material for your student. So do feel free. I know sometimes it can be stressful, that waiting game. Come ask us any questions. We are here for you. So what should students be doing now? Uh, the first thing is finalizing that list of schools to really kind of be firming up the schools that your your student should will be applying to. Um, in determining this list, you do want to have a couple match schools, schools that kind of match your students statistics, GPA, test scores. Uh, you do want a reach school. Maybe your student is falling a little bit below what that school normally accepts and a couple safety schools where your student is above what that school normally accepts. And when we're talking about safety, we are talking academic, but then you do also want to think financial safety too. What would be the financial safety for, for your student? Um, and as Ms. Little kind of pointed out, in these new times, a geographic safety is nice to think of as well. Um, keep track of those dates. We have those virtual visits coming to school, but so especially now in these days, colleges are hosting all sorts of uh, open houses, virtual tours that you can access right on that college website. So it definitely does, it is definitely worth it to really be looking at those college specific websites. Um, the Naviance program you'll hear a little bit more about um, and websites like College Board are great at getting information about colleges, but you really do get the best info right from those individual college websites and to access these virtual tours uh, if they offer interviews to take advantage of those. Another thing students can be doing now is confirming teacher letters of recommendation. Some students ask in spring uh, teachers to write them a letter of recommendation for college. Um, if your student have done that, they should be reaching out to confirm that that is happening. Um, if not, students really should be thinking who they want to ask for a letter of recommendation and re requesting that now. A simple email requesting that um, is okay. Just, you know, a, a polite email requesting that. Um, Another thing students should be working on is uh, finalizing that resume. Students should be keeping a resume of all activities from freshman year to now senior year. So you just want to make sure that is up to date and current. And obviously the essay um, should kind of be a work in progress at this point and really kind of working on that, 
that detailed getting that complete. Um, the essay is a great way to, to give voice to your application. We do recommend starting the applications early. Common, the common application is an application accepted by many schools. Uh, it's accessible online, commonapp.org. We recommend making an account. And then for those non-common app schools, accounts can be made right on that college website. So there's a lot to, to, to be doing now. Please don't get overwhelmed. We are here to help and we're here to help you kind of pace that out. Um, next, we're going to have Ms. Gerald uh, from House One come talk to you. Hi, everyone. My name is Ms. Lakeisha Gerald. I'm one of two guidance counselors in the House One office. So, Naviance. Naviance is an excellent um, portal that we use to support our students look for colleges and careers. So some of the great things about our Naviance um, portal is that we have surveys or questionnaires that really help us and help our students figure out where they're going in their lives, such as colleges or careers. Some of those come with questionnaires such as the interest inventory, which takes students' interests and then links them to different college majors or links them and um, connects them to different careers. Every student, every family has a Naviance account which supports them with finding all those out. I have access and the other guidance counselors have access to support you guys as you're searching and clicking on the different colleges that you guys like. We also use Naviance for our transcripts um, and recommendations that we submit to colleges that are not common app suitable. Naviance also helps with dates and organization and keeping us all on the same page and organized, which is super important for us and everyone on your team. Parents, you guys, like I said earlier, have the counts as well. Some of you guys have already filled out your parent brag sheet with all of our guidance counselors and myself we are really grateful for. But also, this also helps you figure out what colleges or careers your child is, um, are, is interested in. What are they looking for? Um, prices of colleges and things like that, which is super important. And lastly, if you ever need help with finding or getting um, involved in your Naviance account, we can all the guidance counselors have access to resetting your passwords to help you get on. Next, application tips. Like you and like all of us, we're all unique. Colleges are all unique as well. They require different things per school. So sometimes they require different SAT or ACT scores and sometimes they um, require different personal essays. Make sure you guys are paying attention to each step and each portion of that. There are so many different portions um, of an application. And if you're using the Common App, there's so many different steps. Make sure you guys are looking and paying attention to each green mark. For me, a celebration is not the same without confetti. So if you do not have confetti at the end of your application, that means you did not finish it. Make sure you click submit. But before you do, make sure that you click submit and check in with your, your support team, which are your guidance counselors and your family and some of your teachers to make sure everything is in line before you guys click submit. And remember, 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 especially in the time that we're in right now, please, please, please start early making sure that all of your pieces and um, points are together because you never know what could happen. It could be a snowstorm, it could be a blackout, it could be a loss of internet, and even at this point in time, unfortunately, a global pandemic. So please, please, please make sure you guys are starting early. And I'm gonna pass it off to Ms. Sinan. You guys have a great day. Hi everyone, I'm Sue Sinan. I'm one of the guidance counselors in House 3. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about completing your application and uh, what are the important factors in the admissions process. So as Ms. Gerald said, being on time for these things is very important. Um, you want to start early, you need to know your application deadlines. Okay, so use the tools that we've given you through Naviance and on the college's websites to know what your deadlines are and please communicate with us about what your deadlines are. Okay, so that the guidance counselors, the teachers, and your folks can help you to um, submit your applications on time and to not miss out on anything. Okay, you want to um, request recommendation letters from your teachers and from your guidance counselor. Um, talk to your teachers early, give them plenty of time to work on those letters. Seniors, you should have maybe started this already and reach out to your teachers if you've already been in communication with them, let them know what your deadlines are. A complete application includes recommendations, transcripts, your essay, and supplements sometimes. So on the Common App, this can look like the questions section, which can be individual to each college. So you do need to investigate that ahead of time because sometimes there are 
extra essays that you have to write for some particular colleges. So please do check into this. Make sure you're submitting your application with all its components and the necessary fee so that your application can get processed. Another huge part of this process is requesting a transcript from your guidance counselor. You need to do this form that we have available for each and every college that you're applying to. Okay, so doing it once and applying to 10 schools is not sufficient. You have to do it each college that you're applying to, and it does have to come into your guidance counselor 10 school days before your deadline so that we can have time to process and submit everything on your behalf. So again, please stay in touch with us about deadlines, ask questions when you have them. After your application is submitted, the admissions committee is going to look at lots of different components of it to make their decision. First and foremost is your transcript. Colleges want to see the kind of courses you've taken, the grades that you've earned, the strength of the schedule that you have, and this is the most important part of your application. Colleges also look at SATs and ACT scores traditionally. Where we are right now, many colleges have gone test optional, so you do need to investigate this. Some colleges are test optional for all programs all the time. Some colleges are test optional for certain programs or you have to submit your SATs if you want admission to the nursing program or if you want consideration for a merit scholarship. So please investigate each and every college that you're applying to so that you can meet all of their requirements. Um, some schools that are going test optional, in fact, have told us that they're requiring supplemental essays instead. Again, investigate early, make sure you know what you're doing and have time to do it. The essay is another important part of your application. Um, we want you to speak about yourself in this essay. It can be really tempting to talk about a person or an experience who's changed your life and spend a lot of time talking about that and not about its impact on you, the student. So make sure you focus on you, your growth, your development, why you are the way you are, um, because this is how the colleges get to know you as a person and not just as a number or a piece of paper, okay? Um, we do get calls about them in the admissions, uh, the guidance office from the admissions offices um, and they do ask, you know, is this experience real or is this student uh, as good a writer as she seems? And so, you know, make sure that you are putting your best foot forward on paper there. Okay. Recommendations, I've already mentioned, those are part of the process and they can also continue to flesh you out and make you a whole person rather than just a number. So do talk to the teachers and get good recommendation letters written for you. Um, another part of the process is an interview if it's available. Uh, a lot of colleges are offering remote interviews on Zoom or um, just phone interviews now, so you can take advantage of those. Your activities or your resume is a huge factor in the process because it tells the colleges who you are and what you do outside of the classroom. Okay, All of the other things that the high school submits on your behalf talk about who you are here within our walls or in our classes or in our, our um, extracurricular activities. But you also want to talk about your job, your other responsibilities, other skills that you might have. Maybe you're bilingual and you want to emphasize that. So the resume is a good place to do that. Um, and then another factor can be demonstrated interest. So this is, um, some colleges value this more than others. This is where you show how interested you are in a particular school. So the virtual visits that we have coming here to the high school, sign up for those, attend them, connect with the admissions counselor follow up with a thank you note. If you've actually gone to a campus and done a tour, that's another way to demonstrate interest. Um, this really matters to some schools, doesn't always matter to others, um, but they do appreciate the way that you can connect with these schools and show that you are learning about them and that it is um, you know, a place that you really do want to attend college. One of the plus sides of the pandemic is that many, many colleges have a lot more virtual options now. So if you are interested in the University of Tennessee, now you can visit uh, virtual visit there virtually um, instead of you know having to wait until you get accepted to enroll on the campus and see um, what it's really like. So take advantage of those opportunities on the college websites. Um, the last thing I have to talk to you about is the Massachusetts State Universities. In Massachusetts there are five universities, there are nine state universities, and there are 13 community colleges and they're all part of the Massachusetts State College system. The UMass schools and the state universities require a 3.0 GPA for admission. And they have this thing called the sliding scale. If you're looking at our PowerPoint presentation, you'll see that it's in there. What we're hearing from colleges is that they're going to be as flexible as possible with that sliding scale during the pandemic time, because we know that not everybody can take the SATs 
And also under normal conditions, we understand that not everybody does well on the SATs and that their GPA and their transcript is a far better indicator of how successful they will be in college. Um, so check out the sliding scale, take it with a grain of salt. Um, just know that meeting the criteria that you see on the sliding scale does not necessarily guarantee admission. It just makes you eligible for admission. So you still have to go through the other parts of the process. Okay. Um, and when you have questions, reach out to the college that you're considering, and they will certainly be able to help you with more. That's it for me. I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Buckman now. Hi, I'm Ms. Buckman, and I'm a House 2 Guidance Counselor. I'm going to talk to you about the two-year college options. Uh, there are many options for two-year schools. We have private schools, public schools, and also career tech schools that offer education for our students. Um, the community colleges that Ms. Sinan talked about earlier um, do provide the public school option for you to do a two-year degree and have the possibility to transfer to a four-year school afterwards if you so choose. Um, community colleges provide articulation agreements and tr transfer options that those credits will then transfer to a four-year school um, de um, depending on your major and how you do. Um, Every year we have on-site opportunities through Bristol Community College for admission events. Um, our plan is to do something similar this year. Obviously with COVID, there will, be, there will be modifications with that, but last year we had a great event of an on-site admission event with Bristol Community College that helped our students um, out very much. Many of our students take dual enrollment classes throughout high school. Um, this is when students take college level courses at a college such as Bristol Community College um, while they're in high school and it can count for high school credit and for college credit. Um, these credits will go on to the community college system depending on the student's grade and can be transferred to four-year mass state schools and other schools um, upon um, matriculation. Um, career tech schools provide a great opportunity for our students um, who maybe don't want to go the traditional college route but want to um, perfect their trade and get a job that way. We are here to help with that process and the admissions process on that as well. The mass transfer uh, program through the community college program is a specific set of courses that students take in their first two years at um, the community college. These um, classes then are guaranteed to transfer to four-year mass state schools as well as other schools with, that allow the articulation agreements. This is a great way to save money. Um, you know, during the pandemic, a lot of students have been um, going this route because it does save money and provides a safer opportunity for them. Um, the student completes two years at the community college and then um, goes through a transfer process. Um, if the student um, completes the two-year program through the mass transfer block, they are guaranteed an admission at a state university um, if they continue to go on to four years. Some benefits can include with the state um, articulation agreement is that there may be a tuition break um, depending on how you do. I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Janowski um, for the next piece. Hi, I'm Mrs. Janowski, House 3 Guidance. I am here to talk to families about your steps in this process. So it's a very big deal for your current seniors, and it's a very big deal for the adults at home. This might be your firstborn, this might be your lastborn. So there's a lot of different feelings going on about that, and it can be a very bittersweet process. But what can you do to help them with this process? So one of the first things you wanna do, and it's tough with teenagers, I understand, is you wanna keep the open lines of communication. There are going to be days where they're going to want to tell you stuff. There are going to be days where they're just not ready to talk. So you just got to be, always be ready for that and be open to having conversations with them. And these will be conversations unlike you've ever had before. You're going to start talking about budgets and you're going to start talking about finances because that's a very important conversation to have when you're going to college. And in the age of COVID, you really need to be thinking about, do we have backup plans? Is everybody on the same page? Have you talked about what happens? if you need to be at home for the first semester of school, or is going far away what you want to do right now, or is going far away what you want to do right now and how are you going to handle that? So you got to be talking to your students. Um, additionally, your students need to be doing some of the talking. They need to be the primary communication piece between them and the admissions office. Colleges will take your your tuition checks, uh, but they won't necessarily talk to families at home about admissions decisions or anything else along those lines. They treat your children like adults, so they expect the communication to come from them. So encourage them to do that. If they need to role play a conversation with you ahead of time, like I've got to call my admissions office, I have a question about this, that, or the other, you can work with them to help them role play that ahead of time. Makes it a little easier on them when they actually make the call. Um, 
It helps also to provide support for deadlines. I know we talked a little bit about that before. Um, our school has deadlines, colleges have deadlines, your children do need to be cognizant of that. So whatever you can do to support them, uh, they do technically have until 11.59 p.m. before the deadline for a college, so do I. We don't recommend you wait that long, which I, again, you've heard this before. Um, you know, whatever you can do to help them with that, things happen, natural things happen, COVID, hurricanes, those kinds of things, it's happened before. So you just wanna make sure your child's not right on that last moment because it, it ups the ante in terms of all the stress involved. Um, we talked a little bit about talking about finances uh, in terms of what else you can be doing is you and your child can attend one of our MIFA seminars, the Massachusetts Educational Financing Authority, who have a lot of information about financial aid. Um, there are going to be dates between September and November where they are going to have some online virtual meetings. We broadcast those in both English and Spanish, so you have some opportunity to look into that there. Uh, it's a very, very comprehensive website. It's a lot of information there. And if this, is, if this is your first child going to college, it's gonna be a lot of information. It's critical that your child attends that also because they need to understand what they're signing up for also. Um, the difference between a loan, the difference between scholarship, and what needs to be paid back, what doesn't need to be paid back, and how much all those bills accumulate into. So that's something for you all to be having family conversations about. Uh, additional conversations you can be having about are scholarships. Uh, right on our Attleboro homepage, under the guidance tab, we do have a spreadsheet of scholarships that once we hear about them, we advertise them out to you. Uh, your child won't qualify for every single one of them, so be discriminating in what you have them pursue. Um, there are additional scholarship uh, search engines right on that website. So like CapEx and FastWeb, uh, things of that nature. You can set up your own account for the student and they can investigate opportunities that would be available to them. Uh, another type of scholarship that our kids get very excited about are our Attleboro community sponsored scholarships. Um, we have a lot of applications in terms of that. A lot of students apply for those. So there are wonderful opportunities there. Um, I'm gonna be turning it back over to Mrs. Little. She's gonna be talking about employment. Okay. Hi again, um, I'm Mrs. Little and I'm going to be talking about employment. So um, one of the things that's really important to us is that we want to make sure all of our students have a plan. So um, some of our students go on to college, some of our students go to the military, and some of our students work. Um, and last year's class, we did have a number of students that did choose the work option. And so if that is what your child is going through this year, uh, we want to make sure that they're prepared. So um, one of the resources that we highly recommend is to work with the school to career office. Uh, from time to time, they will give us updates on different um, jobs that are available. Um, they can also help with resume writing. All of us in the guidance office will also help with resume writing, um, which is a key component if you're going into employment. We wanna make sure that you, you have a solid resume and we can certainly help with that. We also want to uh, make you aware uh, that if you are going into employment, uh, employers do contact us. So um, different factors that come into play would be attendance, they do ask us, um, your, your grades, any kind of, uh, you know, how, how you were as a student in, in, in high school. So those are things uh, to remember um, if you are going into the, the, the field of work. Um, and it's important to note that they, they will contact us on that. Um, we also are very proud of the fact that we have a number of students going into the military. One of the things that is very important about the military is that you have to do some prep work in order to get there. Um, so the first thing is that we have a number of contacts that will be coming in throughout the year. Um, they're wonderful people that will um, connect with you and, and help you through the process. Um, so if you have questions about um, who you should contact about the Army or the Navy or the Air Force or Marines, um, we can certainly help you with that. Um, the other thing that is very important is that you would need to take the ASVAB test. Um, so the ASVAB is a free test that we actually offer twice a year at Attleboro High School. Um, the first one is going to be November 4th. Um, that's actually a virtual day where you would come in um, or March 3rd. Um, it's very important to, to study for the ASVAB. Um, we have a couple of different resources that we can recommend, um, such as March to Success. Um, that is a very popular one, or Today's Military. 
Uh, we also have resources in the guidance department, such as books and uh, flashcards that you're, you're welcome to take with you. Uh, but one of the things that, that's just really important is to really prepare for that. Um, talk to us about the steps that you need to get there, and we can certainly help you with that. At this point, I'm going to turn things over uh, to Ms. Boyle, who is going to uh, talk to you about more resources. Hi, I'm Jill Boyle. I'm the newest guidance counselor at Adelbar High School, and I am in House 1. Um, just going to wrap up some of these um, additional resources for you moving forward. So um, as Ms. Gerald talked about, Naviance is going to be one of your best tools, whether you're looking to just start the process of looking at schools or get more information about yourself or where you're looking to what you're looking to major in. Um, so Naviance is a really good place for you to kind of start and get the ball rolling. So Naviance can provide you with some college resource some college research. So in the college research, you can um, narrow down schools based off of your criteria and kind of what you're looking for. Um, you can also do some career exploration. So for some students that are not planning to go directly into college for post-secondary, um, there's a lot of career exploration and you can find out a lot about yourself, whether you are going to college, whether you are going into the trades, whether you are going into the military. Um, Naviance is a really, really great tool. And one of the best things about Naviance too is that um, it's going to be the spot where you are going to sign up for a lot of these virtual visits that are happening. So again, with COVID and the current climate that we have right now, a lot of these visits um, are going to be virtual, which is really awesome because I think it'll give you the opportunity to um, possibly visit with more schools than you would have otherwise. Um, just some of the names of schools that are going to be doing virtual visits with us coming up. Uh, we've got New York University, we've got Boston College um, that'll be doing a virtual visit, Coastal Carolina, um, Clemson will be doing a virtual visit with us, URI, and that's just a few of the schools. There's going to be a whole lot of schools that are going to come and do virtual visits with us, and those will typically um, be done on Wednesdays. So um, pay attention to Naviance, and again, Naviance is going to be where you're going to sign up for that. Um, MIFA is also going to be doing um, some presentations. So again, um, pay attention to your emails because this is where we're going to be announcing um, and putting out a lot of this information. Um, and your guidance counselors are obviously also really great resources for information for you. Um, definitely follow us on Twitter. It's at AS AHS Guidance News. Um, and you can check there. We're going to have a lot of updates on there, just different things that we're doing in the guidance office. Feel free to reach out to us for anything, anytime you have a question. Um, but with that being said, we are sending out periodic emails. So make sure you're checking your emails. Make sure that you're looking for these updates. If you are not getting emails, um, by this point, you definitely should have received at least one email about this process. If you are not getting these emails, make sure you reach out to your guidance counselor so we can make sure that we're sending these emails to the proper place because this information is super, super important. Um, so that is, that is all that we have. So thank you for joining us. And we look forward to working with you this year. Mm -hmm.